sometimes we use the potential divider method, okay, or the or a potential divider circuit to change the voltage output so that we can control a device. Like in this in this question, we are controlling the speed of an electric motor. Let's read the question. A voltmeter, this is the voltmeter, is used to monitor the operation of an electric motor. This is the electric motor. Motor speed is controlled by a variable resistor. This is the variable resistor. I'm going to call this RV for variable. Okay. A fixed resistor is used to limit the speed. So this is the fixed resistor. I'm just going to call this R. Okay. Right. Anyway, the current in the motor is gradually changed. So if you look at all these circuit components, the only thing that you can actually adjust and change is your RV. Okay, so when, when we say the current in the motor is gradually changed, this one is by changing your RV. In which circuit is the voltmeter reading proportional to the current in the motor? So we want voltmeter reading to be directly proportional to current. I think what we'll do is we'll just compare the circuits first to see what are their similarities and differences. Okay, I see that these three are almost identical. The only difference is the voltmeter. So if you look at option A, the voltmeter is connected from here to RV. Option B, the voltmeter is connected across the fixed resistor. Option C, the voltmeter is connected across the variable resistor. Okay, and the second thing is, A, eh, this one very weird leh. This voltmeter is connected across the terminal of the supply. So I think we can immediately eliminate D because when you connect directly to the terminal of the supply, and even if you close the switch, okay, you are measuring the terminal voltage. So this one is your terminal voltage. And in this case, it will normally be the EMF. Okay, the electromotive force of your power supply. Okay, yeah. All right, next. You may be wondering, how do I know this is EMF? Well, the short answer here is there's no current flowing. And why is there no current flow? Because the only closed loop that the current has access to is actually from the positive terminal like this. All this got no problem. But don't forget, there is this supply voltage here. So the current actually have to flow through the voltmeter. And in flowing through the voltmeter, there's infinite resistance, so there's no current flow. Okay? Or you just have to understand that when you connect directly, we are measuring the terminal voltage. Okay? So in this case, it's probably not. Anyway, um, next one, we're going to look at this tree. Okay? So this tree, we're going to figure out which one uh, has a graph of V against I that looks like this, proportional, so pass through the uh, origin, okay? When I increase, V increase. So first things first, I need to increase the current, okay? So to increase current, I have to decrease the total resistance. And the only way to decrease the total resistance, because your total resistance of your circuit is actually equal to R plus RV plus resistance of motor, which I don't even know what these three values are, but it doesn't matter. So the only way we can decrease the resistance of the motor, I mean, sorry, of the total resistance is to decrease RV. Okay, so RV is going to drop. Now, when RV drops, or RV decreases, Let's label the potential difference, okay? Because we are measuring three different potential. We measure this one. Let's say I call this VA, okay? We measure this one, VB. We measure this one, V for option C, okay? So definitely I can immediately tell when RV decreases, uh, the potential difference across the variable resistor VC decreases. So current increase, potential of C decrease, C is not an answer anymore. Okay? So this one 
will decrease as current increase. Yep. All right. So now we are left with A and B. Now, if you think about uh, the relationship between VA, VB, and VC, the potential difference across both resistor VA, R, and RB is equal to the potential difference across the resistor R plus the potential difference across the resistor C. Okay. So in this case, right, if I think about VA, okay, it cannot be proportional because R is constant. This R is fixed. Okay. And also at the same time, if you think about this VA, since VA is VB plus VC, and we know that VC is going to decrease, we kind of don't really know what happens to VA because I know VB will increase. Lah. Okay. And I know VB will increase because, um, you know, when current increases, R is fixed. Mark. VB is equal to I times R. This R. Okay. So if this resistance is fixed, this R is constant. But this I increases. So this means VB will also increase. Okay. So if this v, this R increase, I mean, this R is constant and the current increases, VB will increase. So on if you look at VA, right, VA has like a conundrum. We don't know. We need numbers. And this question got no numbers. We know that C will drop, okay, because we decrease the resistance. We know that RV decreases, C will drop. We know that B will increase because the current increases. And when the current increases, VB is bigger. But VA is VB plus VC. The potential difference across both resistors is the sum of both. One decreases. This one decrease. This one increase. Then the total, eh? I don't know. I don't know what happens to the total. Unknown. And since we cannot conclude, this one is just question mark. So the best answer is B. Okay, so let me write down for you here. In this case, um, because for B, B is correct because uh, current increases thanks to, you know, to RV decreasing. R is constant. So this thing, VB is equal to IR, will increase. Okay, VB will increase. Because current increase. Okay, and in this case, for this one, we don't know. Because on one side, this potential increase. On the other side, this potential decrease. This is VC, this is VB. So one increase, one decrease cannot conclude. Need to calculate. Cannot know for sure. Don't know. So that's why the answer is B. All right, that's it for a more confusing potential divider question. Life is always good when you have numbers. If you don't have numbers, I mean, I guess you could put numbers in to calculate, but sometimes it's not really needed. You do by elimination. Eliminate D because this is terminal voltage. Eliminate C because it shows the opposite trend. You can tell that because C shows the opposite trend, you cannot conclude for A. So what is left is B. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.